In this video, I'm going to explain exactly what an NFT is, because honestly, we were looking them up and they are really confusing. So in this video, you're going to learn exactly what they are, why they are valuable, because that was our biggest question, and what the buying process looks like. So a non-fungible token, also known as an NFT, is a type of digital token or asset. A common analogy is to think of these as digital trading cards or digital paintings. Whenever you buy an NFT, you are basically just buying the rights to that specific asset. Now, non-fungible means that it can't be changed whenever it is created. You can't split it up, and it must be distinguishable from something else. Unlike a Bitcoin, one Bitcoin is the exact same as another Bitcoin. Well, with NFTs, they're never the same. They're always different. And also, a token is just a small piece of data that you own. Together, an NFT is a token that you own that doesn't change throughout time. So that's the basics. But when it comes down to the technicals, what exactly is an NFT? Well, NFTs are actually just a piece of data that is owned by an address. And whoever has the password to that address, they own that piece of data. And this piece of data can be bought and sold to different addresses. And that data is verified on a blockchain. And you can actually check the owner history is always trackable with an NFT. For example, this CryptoKitty that sold for $600,000 is essentially just a small URL that is owned by an address. The only thing that that person owns is a tiny piece of data. Now that piece of data points to a server somewhere that usually hosts an image. And technically, whoever owns that server could change the image. And it's important to know what you are actually buying when you buy an NFT. You are buying a piece of data that points to a server that hosts either an image or a GIF. You should know that the server could change, or that the image and GIF could change. It's actually the specific piece of data that you actually own on the blockchain, not the access to the server and not the image or the GIF, but rather that tiny piece of data that points to the server. So in a sense, when you buy an NFT, you're buying a small piece of data that represents something larger. Kind of like buying a stock. You're not buying the entire company. And unless it's a dividend stock, you're not actually getting anything from it. So this brings us to the question, why would you want to buy an NFT? And there's many reasons. But right now, the main reason most people are buying is because they see NFTs as collectibles in the investment category. So let's go over four main things that make an NFT valuable. Number one, first. So just like Bitcoin is so popular because it was the first cryptocurrency, the first NFTs of specific creators or businesses will also have value. For example, Pokemon cards are quickly gaining popularity and the most expensive cards are those that were produced in the first edition. So let's say if you have the first United States NFT, it will likely have some perceived value. The second thing that makes an NFT valuable is its utility, which in other words is the real world benefits. So imagine if Elvis Presley was still alive and he sold 50 NFTs. Now by owning one of them, you could have lifetime access to any of the shows that he participated in. Now these NFTs would quickly become popular and very expensive due to their real world benefits. Personally, this is the only reason I would buy an NFT, is if it had a real world benefit. And I think in the future, almost all NFTs will evolve to have this sort of aspect. Creators will sell NFTs for income and in return have a membership community or do a monthly lunch meeting or something in that fashion. The third thing that makes an NFT valuable is if it's unique or rare. So for example, think of the Mona Lisa. Anyone can have a copy of the Mona Lisa in their room. But only one person, or a museum in this case, can hang up the real painting by Leonardo da Vinci for everyone to view. Now the same goes for the original Constitution of the United States, or a Babe Ruth signed baseball. They are rare. Imagine if Stephen Hawking only minted three NFTs. They would be very valuable because there's only three originals. Even if they're just pictures of the universe. Other people could have that picture, but they wouldn't have the original one minted by Stephen Hawking. The last thing that I found that makes an NFT valuable is ownership history. So for example, what's your favorite celebrity? <laughs> Mine personally is Robert Downey Jr. So let's say he decides to sell his leather jacket and buy a new one. Well, when he first bought that leather jacket, maybe he paid $200 for it. But me, I might pay $800 just to have the same jacket that Robert Downey Jr. wore. Now the same goes for NFTs. Someone might be willing to pay a million dollars of an image of a duck that Barack Obama owned at one point. 
So keeping these in mind, you should think about what actually makes an NFT valuable. If an NFT is the first of its kind, if it has a real world benefit, if it's rare, and if someone important owned it. These are questions to ask yourself during valuation of an NFT. For example, does buying Jack Dorsey's first tweet for two and a half million dollars fit any of these? Let's go down the list. Is it a first? Yes, it actually is the first NFT in that category. Second, does it have utility? It does not. You don't get to change the tweet and you don't get to advertise your business or something like that. Third, is it unique? Yes, it is unique. Lastly, what about its ownership history? Well, this is actually a no. Yes, it is Jack Dorsey's first tweet, but nobody famous has actually owned the specific NFT yet. To fit this category, for example, maybe it was my tweet and then PewDiePie owned it, then the answer would be yes. But in this example, it only checks two of the boxes. So if you buy his first tweet, you're basically betting that someone else in the future will want to buy it for a higher price. Because holding that NFT does absolutely nothing for you. There is no utility. You're buying it as a novelty or as an investment. Unless one day Jack Dorsey says whoever holds that NFT, he'll have lunch with once a month. Then the value would skyrocket. So now that we have kind of went over what they are and how they work, let's go over how popular they quickly become. Just look at this Google Trends data of searches in February and March in 2021. In fact, that's what inspired this video. We knew absolutely nothing and so we created this video to help people because all the stuff that we were looking up was very, very confusing. So if this video clears anything up for you, make sure to click that like button. Also, as a newer channel, you might consider subscribing because it helps us immensely, as this video actually took hours to research, write, and animate. Moving on, I'd like to tell you the 11 most valuable NFTs. Now, this might get a little rambly, and you can skip ahead if you don't want to listen to them. Number one, CryptoPunk6965. In February 19, 2021, it sold for 800 Ethereum. Next, we have CryptoPunk4156 which sold for 650 Ethereum in February 18th, 2021. Third, we have CryptoPunk 2890, which sold for 605 Ethereum in January 24th, 2021. Then we have the famous Dragon Crypto Kitty, which sold for 600 Ethereum. CryptoPunk 6487, which sold for 550 Ethereum. Next up, we have some land in the Decentraland world, around 12,600 square meters. It sold for 514 Ethereum. Next is something called Hashmask 9939, which sold for 420 Ethereum. This really interesting car concept, the F1 Delta Time, actually sold for 415 Ethereum. Another CryptoPunk sold for 400 Ethereum. And an actual lot of land in the Decentraland world sold for 345 Ethereum. And the famous Nyan Cat sold for 300 Ethereum on February 19th, 2021. So another important question to ask about NFTs is can someone copy your NFT? Well, technically, yes. Someone can copy an NFT just like any other piece of artwork. But the original NFT address can be traced back to the original creator since all NFTs have a log of their transaction history. It's also important to note someone could create a new NFT that points to the exact same hosting address that the original NFT does, or they could point it to a different address that is of the same image or GIF. Now, the value in an NFT is not the image. It's the specific piece of data. Just like I could make a free throw at my local YMCA, and LeBron James could toss one in while 30,000 people are watching. Even though these are basically the same thing, one has way more value based on what other people think of it. I may be doing the exact same thing LeBron is doing, but people value his free throw way more than mine. Another question you might have moving into the NFT space is how do you buy an NFT? Because purchasing an NFT is actually quite simple, and it's probably the same difficulty as purchasing a stock of a company. Now you should know most NFTs are sold on marketplaces, kind of like eBay, Amazon, and Facebook Marketplace, but that specialize in NFTs. One thing that might be a drawback of buying NFTs is that they are usually purchased with Ethereum, so you'll likely need to own some actual Ethereum before you purchase a CryptoKitty or an NBA Top Shot. Buying cryptocurrency and trading it to a wallet that you can buy an NFT usually takes some technical skill on transferring crypto, because if you do it incorrectly, you could lose all of your money in the transaction. So here are the four most commonly used NFT exchanges that allow you to buy and sell NFTs. App.rarible.com, niftygateway.com, OpenSea.io, and superrare.co. So whenever you go to buy an NFT, the first step is to create an account on that specific website. Step number two is that you'll either have to buy crypto on another exchange and then transfer it to the wallet on that exchange. You should know NFT wallets are very similar to any other cryptocurrency wallet. They usually have a public and a private key. 
And for those wanting the technicals, most are based on the ERC721 protocols. But I promised that I would not get too technical in this video. And then lastly, you can actually bid like an auction and pay for whatever NFT that you're attempting to buy. And if you win, that NFT will get added to your account and then stored in your wallet. Which brings us to the next question. Where do you store your NFT? Because now that you've purchased your NFT, you're probably wondering where the heck you store it. Well, you store it on a wallet. You'll want to make sure that it's safe and accessible to show your friends and other people what you've recently purchased. Now, the best way to store your NFTs is on a hardware wallet. Something along the lines of a Ledger Nano, where it can be offline and protected. But if you're wanting to keep it online, here are some online applications that host wallets for you. Metamask.io, TrustWallet.com, and Engine.io. And if we were to go any further in on this process, it would probably take quite a bit of technical knowledge. So I'm sorry to say that's where this video ends. I hope you found it helpful and I hope it clears up some confusion. Ending this video, please don't forget to like the video and subscribe so you get future whiteboard crypto videos just like this one. We promise to keep it simple for you. Thanks for watching and we hope to see you in the next one.